गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन सो इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी जस्ट स्टार्टेड विद द इंट्रोडक्शन टू इन डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस एंड थ्री स्मॉल स्मॉल कॉन्सेप्ट दैट वी हैव सीन दैट इज वॉट आर दी वेरियस टैक्सेस दैट गॉट सब्ज्यूम्ड इन टू जी एस टी एंड सेकेंड एस्पेक्ट द मॉडल ऑफ जी एस टी एंड थर्ड द पोजिशन ऑफ गुड्स सो इवन आफ्टर इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ जी एस टी फ्रॉम दिस वी अंडरस्टूड दैट इन जी एस टी देर आर two non taxable supplies what are the two non taxable supplies in gst alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum products five petroleum products and remaining goods and services are covered under the ambit of gst but few are taxable if you are exempted exempted means what you don't have to pay gst but is it covered under the levy of gst yes it is covered under the levy of gst but right now it is exempted and whenever the exemption is withdrawn it will become taxable so that's how it will be working for example so we have one uh, exemption in the past we had one exemption room tariff up to 1000 rupees per day is exempted for example you are staying in a hotel and where the room tariff is less than or equals to 1000 rupees per day so that particular room accommodation was exempted but now that exemption has been withdrawn which means whatever may be the amount it will become taxable even 800 rupees per day 600 rupees per day for example you take an example of hostels huh? hostels usually in hostels what will be the uh, monthly charges what could be the monthly charges maximum we will see how much maximum it could be 10000 15000 let's take 15000 all inclusive like they are giving a super star treatment and all so even then 15000 rupees is on the higher end actually because people spend somewhere 7000 8000 etc 15000 is really big amount but even then per day it will not cross 1000 rupees how 15000 divided by 30 or 31 how much per day less than 1000 rupees previously all the hostels was enjoying this exemption but now the hostels every hostel will be covered under the taxability why it will be covered under the taxability so this particular you know 1000 rupees point is removed exemption is removed so now it became taxable so then all the hostels are required to pay gst yes now what they are telling g pay accounted and all not accepted pay by cash you understood go, go to atm withdraw cash and give us the cash so then only we will give you hostel accommodation and all correct so because uh, you know gst issues is there for them so cash transaction is the better transaction why no one will know that the transaction has happened unless otherwise some income tax department or gst department conducts a raid and they identify that this person is holding so much of cash and that particular cash is nothing but by way of some transactions that he has earned and then penalties etc but only when he caught correct only when he get caught at the time what he will do he will share some uh, wealth with the officers who are coming for the raid search etc and all and they will try to escape so this element of cash transaction is something like a devil in the country so we cannot eliminate that it's very very difficult so people are like government is trying uh, government is making lot of efforts to do that they are calling back 2000 rupee notes and uh, they will call back 500 rupee notes how much ever a digital transaction is happening also but still this cash transactions could not be eliminated but that is there that is always a loophole okay but what i am trying to convey is that usually government will give certain transactions as exempted and they will remove the transactions from the exempted and make it taxable but all the goods and services are covered under the levy of gst what are the two goods which are not at all covered is what we have seen that is alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum products and then you can see the first page what are the major features of indirect taxes already you know about indirect taxes but one point which i wanted to highlight here is that what is the difference between income tax as well as indirect tax when it comes to computation computation point of view can there be both indirect tax and income tax on the same transaction is it possible to have both indirect tax as well as income tax on a single transaction 
is it possible or not possible what is your view possible for example you know there is a chartered accountant who gets fee from the client on that fees he need to pay gst and on his profit he will have some profit so this fees will be his gross income minus his expenses so he will get some profit on that profit he need to pay income tax pgbp are you getting this same way i am selling some assets other than land and building because land and building will not be treated as goods right now we are dealing with what what tax what is the tax name that we are dealing with goods and services tax will land and building come under goods no so there is no gst on land and building but there are some other assets on that other assets when it is being sold will there be an attraction of capital gain tax yes but the capital gain tax that is income tax under the head capital gains we will compute on what gross or net net what is that net full value of consideration minus cost of acquisition or indexed cost of acquisition on the difference but on the entire sale price we need to pay gst so now what is the point of difference that we have understood here gst or indirect tax is computed on the gross that is revenue whereas income tax will be computed on the net what is that net profit that is gross minus expenses on that we will be computing the income tax that's the reason why if you take any head so you take house property rental income minus a standard deduction we are giving correct or not same way you take capital gains there is deduction you take pgbp revenue income we will see and minus expenses big list of expenses and all we will be deducting correct or not but in gst we will not do that in gst it is always the gross amount involved in the transaction on that gross amount only we will pay same is the case of customs duty also customs duty is never on the profit customs duty is on the price involved in the transaction so that is the difference here i am talking about you can see so revenue revenue equals to gross collections income equals to revenue minus expenses so tax is not on income but on revenue from sale of goods or services which tax gst, GST or indirect taxes whereas income tax is on what net, net. that is on income what, what is it income revenue minus expenses so is there a possibility of both indirect taxes as well as income tax on every transaction yes yes generally but there are some exceptional cases where there will be income tax but there is no gst there is gst but there is no income tax possible for example you know renting of residential property renting of residential property we get a rental income on that rental income whether we need to pay income tax yes because whether the property is residential property or commercial property the moment you give it on let out so you get the rent on that you need to pay income tax income from whose property correct or not but in gst renting of residential property to an unregistered person is exempted so generally what i said on every transaction there will be income tax as well as indirect tax this is general rule but there are exceptions as well sometimes there will be only income tax but there won't be any indirect tax that is gst is not there for that example only i gave you renting of residential property okay same way sometimes there won't be income tax but there will be indirect tax example so in income tax this uh, section 10 and section uh, 80 we have some exemptions in 10 if you see charitable trust charitable trust getting money is not required to pay that is uh, which charitable trust religious trust 1023c 1023d then 11 and 12 regular charitable trust correct or not and even the section 80 that ia ib certain units are their industrial units they are exempted from payment of income tax on their profits correct even though they are not required to pay income tax 
Are they required to pay GST on the transaction that they are doing? Yes. Are you getting this? So, general rule is what? There will be both income tax as well as indirect tax. But sometimes there will be exceptions where there is only income tax but not GST, where there is only GST but not income tax. But generally both also will come and you should not get confused. Sir, income tax is there, sir, why there is indirect tax then? You understood? Then one more example also I will give you. Salaries you take, salaries. On salaries there is income tax but there is no GST on salaries. Got it? There is no GST on salaries. It is excluded from supply. The transaction will not be. That is employee receiving salary from the employer. He is not required to pay any GST but is required to pay income tax. Okay. Then, sir, is there a possibility of double taxation because of DT and IDT? Yes, that is what I am discussing now. In IDT itself, is there a possibility of double taxation? Yes. Yes. How, sir? You take cinema tickets. There is entertainment tax. And there is GST. Both are there. Correct. So, when you go to a cinema theatre, say ticket price 170 rupees, for example, I am taking. Okay. So, because majority of the cinema theatres in Chennai are charging 170, 180 or 190, this range only is the ticket price, but before adding any taxes. Okay. So, then on the top of that entertainment tax will be added. On the top of the GST will be added, 28% or 18% GST will be added. So, that is where it will go to 250 rupees, so 300 rupees and all ticket price. But I am talking about the value before adding this taxes. So, entertainment tax also we are paying and GST also we are paying. Both are indirect taxes or not? Yes. So, will there be a double taxation possibility? Yes, there is a double taxation possibility. So, is there any measures that are taken by the government? No. Why they are not taking any measures? Why are they bothered first of all? Why are they bothered? It is revenue. You got it. Unless otherwise people protest, government will not do any voluntary action because here there is a conflict of interest. Government's job is what? To make more and more money. And people till the time they are ready to pay, they are able to afford to pay, so they will be paying. Now, what happens? So, the moment people understand that this taxes and all is killing them. So, what they will do? They will start doing the protest. When they do the protest and they say, we don't need any freebies, etc. and all. Because ultimately, the inflation is rising. The prices are rising. We don't need your any benefits that you are giving. So, then automatically, government also what they will think, okay, fine. As people don't want any freebies, etc. and all, we can reduce the taxes. So, this tug of war is only happening here. That is the reason why. So, there are many transactions which may get double taxation. So, but for that, we cannot do anything with respect to that. It is not like, uh, so in income tax, we have DTAA. One country and another country, if the same income is getting tax, we have double taxation avoidance agreements. But in India, we do not have anything like that. For indirect taxes, so same transaction may have both indirect taxes. Any more than one indirect tax also is possible. Are you getting this? Then remaining points and all general here. That is, it is a major and important source of revenue to government. Will you agree? Because the share of indirect tax is high compared to income tax. Liability is on one person and burden is on another person. Correct? And who will have the ultimate burden? <laughs> Consumer. Who will have the ultimate burden? Consumer. And wider tax base as more number of people are covered under indirect taxes. Correct? Because you would have read uh, recent statistics as to how many people are filing income tax return in India. So, what could be the percentage of people who are filing income tax return? Tax returns like with payment of tax. Hardly 2, you know, 2, 3 percent only. Filing is there. But in that, they are going for refunds. You understood or not? Refunds, income tax return filing with tax I am talking about. Very less number of people only will be paying literally the taxes. Remaining and all what they will do. Anyhow, TDS is there. So, they will file the return only for the sake of getting the refund. So, the tax base if you see, so of income tax is very less. But indirect tax, majorly everyone is covered now in indirect taxes. Correct? 
so even small small traders are also covered everyone all small service providers so it's a wider tax base promote social welfare this is bullshit i don't know how it will promote social welfare how indirect tax will promote social welfare as high rate of tax are levied on tobacco products if you really wanted to create social welfare you should ban the tobacco on tobacco products you should not levy more taxes on tobacco on tobacco products as i am leaving more tax on alcohol i am leaving more tax on tobacco product because of the consumption has come down no it will not come down and all it will be the same sir did you see any person complaining that you know i am not able to consume the liquor because you know i am not earning money no somehow they will do they do crime or they do anything else but they want to satisfy the desire of consuming the liquor and tobacco so therefore price increase your price increase petrol price 1 rupee increase people will do lot of over action but the same alcohol price increases by 10 rupees also ah, it's okay fine we will pay tobacco product increases by 5 rupees it's okay we will consume so why like that so because that's a different altogether these are like divine goods you understood or not price inelastic goods and therefore consumption and all will not come down so that's why i said it's a bullshit point how it will promote social welfare i don't know it is regressive in nature this also you know that so direct tax is progressive in nature and indirect tax is regressive in nature regressive means what irrespective of your income you are required to pay indirect taxes correct now let's take a product the same product for example toothpaste so irrespective of the income group everyone will buy the toothpaste correct or not a daily wage earner also will buy the toothpaste so and even a rich person also should buy the toothpaste correct or not maybe brand etc will differ that's okay but toothpaste is something which is common na everyone will buy now on toothpaste there is gst now on every person irrespective of their income status there is the same amount of tax but direct tax is not like that so low income earning people will pay lesser income tax high income earning people will be paying higher income tax correct that is what progressive versus regressive so these are some features of indirect taxes pa and uh, you don't have to remember this and all just for uh, knowledge sake okay then this aspects we have seen already what are the various old indirect taxes and milestones in implementation of gst here we have few key points to learn what is the constitutional amendment that has happened for implementation of gst previously seventh schedule to the constitution seventh schedule to the constitution will talk about the powers of central government state government etc so this seventh schedule to the constitution was divided into three list union list state list and concurrent list union list means who will make the law central government state list means who will make the law state government concurrent list means who will make the law both central government and state government tax related entries are uh, were not there in concurrent list but tax related entries were there only in union list and state list now gst is gst a single tax model or a dual tax model dual tax model in dual tax model who will be levying tax central government as well as state government now we have to amend the seventh schedule to the constitution to empower both cg and sg to levy the gst that's the reason why there was a requirement of constitution amendment and the constitution amendment act has happened in 2016 or 2017 2016 not 2017 so we will think gst law is implemented from 2017 so therefore constitution amendment also happened in 2017 but wrong constitution amendment happened in which year 2016 say this constitution amendment act constitution 101st amendment act 2016 whereas the bill was presented in which year 2014 okay constitution amendment bill 2014 whereas act is 2016 okay so why there is a difference between the bill number and the act number 
general knowledge. Bill wise, if you see 122nd, act wise, if you see 101st, why there is a difference like this? Ha, not every bill presented in the constitution got passed. So, it will be rejected. There are many bills that got rejected. So, bill wise, the order is 122nd and act wise, the order is 101st. Okay. And uh, therefore, what is the effective date of implementation of GST across India? 1-7-2017. And which was the first country to implement GST in the world? France. France. So, these are the key points which you need to know. Maybe for MCQs, somewhere it may be tested for that purpose. France became the first country to implement GST. So, whether GST is in India alone or in many countries, many countries, many countries, approximately 160 countries before India adopting GST have adopted, okay. Not that we are only creating it for the first time, it was already there. And now we will see what are the types of GST. In order to know the types of GST, please take page number 6. We need to know the difference between intrastate supply and interstate supply. First, indirect tax is a dash based taxation. No, what based? On what base? Even based. Even based. Dual GST only, but on what? Even. Even based taxation. And like the GST, what is the event? The event is supply. Got it? GST, all indirect taxes is event based taxation. But GST, what is the event? Supply of goods or services. Like for example, excise duty event was manufacture. Sales tax event was sale. And customs event was import or export. Like that. What is the event under GST? Supply of goods or services. So, what is the meaning of this supply? We will be learning in the next segment, next chapter. The next chapter we will learn in detail that will go for around some 6-7 classes only knowing what is the meaning of supply. Got it? So, that is a very big definition which we will be seeing later. But right now, try to understand supply is a taxable event. So, this supply is divided into two. What are they? Intrastate supply and interstate supply. Intrastate supply versus interstate supply. What is that it is running in your mind? Intrastate means within the state. Interstate means one state to another state. But this is just the layman understanding. But the real meaning of intrastate or interstate is not within the state or from one state to another state. There are two factors which we need to understand. So, depending upon these two factors, the transaction will be either intrastate supply or interstate supply. What are the two factors? Location of supplier and place of supply. These are the two factors. So, what are the two factors here? Location of supplier and place of supply. These are the two factors that we need to know. So, what is location of supplier? Location of supplier. Where the supplier is located? Uh, where? How to identify? If they are registered, that registered place. If they are providing services from their registered place, that registered place. Suppose if they are registered, but providing services from a different establishment, then that fixed establishment or business establishment will be taken as the location of supplier. For example, let us try to understand that say, I have registration in Andhra Pradesh. I do not have, but for example, I am telling you. I have registration in Andhra Pradesh, GSTN in Andhra Pradesh, registered address in Andhra Pradesh. But I am taking classes in Chennai in a fixed establishment. Then what will be taken as the location of supplier? Chennai. So why? Because if the services are rendered from a fixed establishment, that fixed establishment will become the location of supplier. So then sir, here I have to get any registration? Of course, yes. Of course, I have to get a registration here. Why I should get a registration? Remember, 
every state from where we are making business, we need to get registered in that state. We don't have centralized registration concept in GST. You might have studied this in inter also. Can we have centralized registration in GST, single registration across the country? No. In every state, we need to obtain separate registration if we are making business from that state. Are you getting this? So, therefore, the location of supplier is if they are registered, that registered place. What if they are not registered? Then whichever place they are rendering the services. What if they are not rendering services from a place? What if it is online transactions, etc. and all? Lot of freelancers are there, na? What they will do? Like uh, this uh, software people or teachers who take online classes, etc. So, what will be the location of supplier? Usual place of residence. You got it? So, that will be taken as the location of supplier. So, three points in location of supplier. Again, we will come across this in place of supply. Place of supply we will learn in the detail. But right now, to uh, try to understand what is the meaning of location of supplier? Three things. Number one, registered place, fixed establishment or business establishment, usual place of residence. You please write down below that chart. I have given some space for notes now. There you write down. Usually, location of supplier is usually location of supplier is registered place, registered place or fixed establishment fixed establishment or usual place of residence, usual place of residence. So, this will be taken as the location of supplier, okay. Now, you understood what is the location of supplier. So, we can easily determine that. So, sometimes it will be the place, registered place. Sometimes it will be the fixed establishment or a business establishment. Anyway, you can understand, okay. And suppose in the absence of that, the usual place of residence will be taken, okay. Then, what will be the place of supply? Again, that is a very big chapter. We have one separate chapter itself on this place of supply. Depending upon the transaction, the place of supply will differ. Sometimes a place of supply will be location of recipient. Sometimes a place of supply will be location of supplier. Sometimes it will be the location where the immobile property is situated. Sometimes it will be location where service are performed. Like the different, different uh, points we have for place of supply. For each transaction, the place of supply will differ, which we will be learning again in future. So, but only when you know these two factors, you can determine what is the nature of supply, whether it is intrastate or interstate. Now, listen, concentrate. If location of supplier and place of supply is in the same state or same union territory, it is what? Intra, same state or same union territory. Which two? Supplier and recipient or supplier and place of supply? Supplier and place of supply. It is not location of recipient. Okay. How, sir? Generally, recipient will be in the same state, na, sir. Not necessary, not necessary. I am telling you, na. For example, say there is a CA office, pa. Okay, there is a chartered accountant's office. So, measures A, B, C, and Co. Chartered accountants, chartered accountants. So, Tamil Nadu, okay. A, B, C and Co, Chartered Accountants, Tamil Nadu. And they got a outstation audit assignment. Possible? Or they should get always audit in the Chennai, in Tamil Nadu. Not necessary. No? You might have done lot of outstation audits. It all depends upon what contacts and it depends upon the output. So, how best your firm is able to do and it depends upon the price. There are many factors. So now, this firm has got an outstation audit from Mumbai. Okay. So now, where is the client office located? 
client office is located in Mumbai. So, client office, client office is in Maharashtra, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Now, what will happen? So, the article students, okay. So, the bonded labor team will be going to the client's office for what doing the audit, okay. So, now when the article students, article students, so go over there, so to the client office, so generally as per audit engagement, it will differ, but assuming that, so they need to spend for the hotel accommodation, generally it depends upon the audit engagement. Sometimes a client will book the hotel, sometimes the chartered accountant, that is the audit office will like uh, chartered accountant's office will book the accommodation. It differs, okay. Now here say, so they are staying in a hotel. So measures breathe hotels, like that one hotel is there, where in Mumbai, Maharashtra. So in this, hotel that article students are staying okay now who will pay the money to these hotels sometimes it will be client sometimes it will be ca office say ca office has made the payment okay consideration for hotel accommodation so for this article students the hotel accommodation is provided by the breeze hotels hotel accommodation and for that hotel accommodation, who made the payment? The CA office has made the payment. Now what Breeze Hotels did, they raised the invoice to the CA office, you understood? They raised the invoice to the CA office. Now in this case, what will be the location of supplier? Location of supplier, location of supplier if you see, the location of supplier here is Maharashtra and what will be the place of supply? As this service is in relation to immobile property, any service in relation to immobile property, the place of supply will be location of that immobile property. Is it service in relation to immobile property? Yes or no? So what will be taken as the place of supply? Location of immobile property. So what will be the place of supply? place of supply is Maharashtra. But what is the location of recipient? What is the location of recipient to whom they raised the invoice? C office in Tamil Nadu. Now, is it intrastate or interstate? Is it intrastate or interstate? Intrastate. So, we should not see the location of recipient. If you see the location of recipient, it becomes interstate but we should not see the location of recipient. What we need to see is the place of supply. So, based on this, it is what type of supply? Intrastate supply, which means hotel will raise what invoice? Intrastate invoice. They will not raise interstate invoice, even though the recipient is in the another state. Is it clear or not? Are you understanding? Sir, always it is like this? No. Here, what is the criteria? The place of supply. This place of supply is there na. Because of this place of supply only, it is like this. What if the place of supply becomes Tamil Nadu? Then it will become interstate. Now, for some transactions, it will be, you know, place of supply is different from the location of recipient. But for some transactions, location of recipient itself is the place of supply then it will become interstate. For example, let us try to understand this with another example that say I am taking classes, okay. So, there is a CA coaching center, CA coaching center. This CA coaching center is located in Tamil Nadu and there is a CA student and this CA student is located in Maharashtra. So, they provided the coaching services, so Google Drive, okay, online classes or Google Drive classes, etc. Online classes. For these online classes, the consideration is also being paid by the student. Now, in this case, what will be taken as the location of supplier? Come on. 
location of supplier is what tamil nadu location of supplier is tamil nadu and what will be the place of supply so this will come under you know training and performance appraisal services actually this will come under training services in case of this training services location where service are actually performed will be taken as the place of supply okay so where the service are actually performed tamil nadu only because the coaching center wherever it is there there only the classes are being taken that is online class may be related to the students but what will be taken as the place of supply in this case ha huh. tamil nadu okay suppose if it is not coming under training if it is not coming under training so ca coaching actually will not come under training why it will not come under training is there any completion certificate that you get after completion of the classes this is to certify that so on so student has successfully completed gst classes from tarun's brainery i will give you certificate and you can post it in your linkedin that you completed uh, you know one skill correct have you seen linkedin what people will be doing there so this only they will learn something and they will post that okay so crazy people are there in linkedin and all and uh, you know by mistake also don't go there huh? because you will feel like are yaar what kind of morons they are so they will learn something and one certificate they get that certificate they will post over there are yaar certificate means something if you write a exam or if you write a test you should get that but today some 3 hours 4 hours one course will be there that course you will complete you will get one certificate so that certificate you will post how that and all will be counted i really don't know so then if that be the case then ca also lot of ca videos are there in youtube we can study all those things and we will get for one one subject one one course completion certificate so then ca completed every tom dick and harry can complete ca na then you understood so training requires a certification then only it will be called as training so then where it will come sir coaching will not come under training so then where it should be classified general provisions as per general provisions what will be taken as the place of supply location of recipient will be taken as the place of supply because in ca coaching there is no element of training that is involved if ica is doing some course like advanced itt or orientation or something what is it they call us gmcs sir huh so that that and all they will give a certificate correct that will be coming under training okay but this ca coaching when you attend with some private coaching center that is not called as training that will be commercial coaching for commercial coaching what is the place of supply location of recipient what is the location of recipient come on maharashtra and location of recipient is maharashtra so what will be the nature of supply come on interstate or intrastate interstate are you understanding this darlings so now until the time we complete place of supply chapter we will not be able to classify whether a transaction is intrastate or interstate okay that's why place of supply chapter is so crucial now sir why we need to classify this way because if it is a intrastate supply then the type of gst will be cgst and sgst okay if it is what supply intrastate supply what is the gst that will be applicable cgst and sgst who will levy cgst name itself say central government who will levy sgst state government sir what is the meaning of intrastate supply can you tell me once again without seeing the book two factors if location of supplier and place of supply is in the same state or same union territory then it will be intrastate if it is in the same state then it will be cgst sgst if it is in same union territory then it will be cgst plus utgst understood or not okay so what is an example of union territory 
Pondicherry is not a union territory here. Pondicherry is union territory with state legislature. We need to treat it like a state only. Why, sir? Because Pondicherry, we have assembly, government, chief minister, set of cabinet ministers. It will function like a state, but it is called as union territory with state legislature. For GST purpose, it should be treated as what? State. So, which act will be applicable there? UTGST Act or SGST Act? SGST Act will be applicable there. Are you understanding? Then one more, one more example. Pondicherry will not be the correct way for the CGST, UTGST. Ha, Daman and DU, Dadra Nagar Haveli. This is now one union territory. Previously, Daman and DU, Dadra Nagar Haveli was treated as two separate union territories. Now, they merged these two. So, this is one single union territory and there if the location of supplier and place of supply is there, then it will be CGST plus UTGST. Understood? So, now tell me in case of intrastate supply, what is the combination that we will have? Either CGST plus SGST or CGST plus UTGST. Understood? Then from this, can you tell me what is interstate supply? What is interstate supply? If location of supplier and place of supply is in, is not in the same state or same unit territory, okay, then if it is not in the same state or same unit territory, then it will be in different states, different union territories or a state and a union territory, then it will be interstate supply, okay. Come on once again, if location of supplier and place of supply is in two different states or two different union territories or a state and a union territory, then it will be known as interstate supply. That is the meaning of intrastate supply versus interstate supply. In case of interstate supply, what is the type of GST that will be applicable? IGST. So, IGST full form integrated goods and services tax. Now, concentrate. CGST when levied, when? Which transaction? Intrastate. SGST? UTGST? IGST? Super. CGST levied by central government. SGST levied by UTGST levied by central government. Central government. So, it is not union territory because union territory do not have the power of levy because all union territories are under whose control? Central government's control. Then UTGST will be levied by central government. Sir, CGST is also levied by central government. UTGST is also levied by central government. Then why do we have separate, uh, you know, head called as CGST and UTGST? Because CGST, CGST is the contribution of all the states towards central government, whereas UTGST is the contribution of the union territories. They want to maintain a separate demarcation between these two. Otherwise, if everything is put into one head, then we do not know how much contribution has been made by the union territories. For that purpose only, we are putting it into a separate accounting head. For example, in expenditure, in accounts, while doing accounts, expenses, you will classify into multiple heads. Na. Everything is expenses. Actually, according to me, the profit and loss account should be so simple. Revenue, expenses, we get the profit. For that, why we make one big table and we classify all those things. Wow, what is the need? Revenue minus expenses, profit, correct. But why we bifurcate the expenses for the sake of analyzing it correct so how much is the wages how much is the salaries how much is the production expenses so we need to know that and how much expenses are because of some extraordinary activities like penalties if we pay anything or whether we paid any interest for delay in payment or taxes how much we paid everything we bifurcate because we need to analyze like that same reason even though CGST is levied by central government, UTGST is levied by central government but they want to know as to how much contribution is made so that is the reason why two separate accounting heads we have got it then IGST levied by 
central government. Sir, in case of intrastate, we have two tax structure, correct? Either CGST plus SGST or CGST, UTGST. So, we have dual GST model here, yes or no? We have dual GST model, but in case of interstate, whether we have dual GST model, no, there is only single GST. What is that single GST? IGST. And who will be levying it? Central government. Whether state governments get anything out of that? Yes. Yes. Because dual GST model objective needs to be kept. How there can be only one government enjoying the entire GST? Even though IGST is collected by central government, they cannot completely enjoy the benefit. They need to share 50 percent with the. So, why 50 percent? Usually in dual GST, what is the sharing ratio? 50-50. 50-50. So, therefore, 50 percent they need to share with whom? State government. Which state government? For example, say this. There is a supplier, there is a supplier who is located in Tamil Nadu and there is a recipient who is located in Karnataka. Okay. And this supplier is making some sale of goods, sale of goods to the recipient and for which the recipient has paid the consideration and the place of supply if you see is the location of recipient. So, the location of recipient will also be taken as the place of supply here. The place of supply is location of recipient. Now, tell me what is the nature of supply, intra or inter? Interstate. Interstate. Now, in this consideration, what will be collected? Price plus IGST. Am I right? Now, this IGST supplier in Tamil Nadu will pay to whom? Which government? To central government, the supplier will pay IGST. The supplier will pay IGST to central government. Now, what is that I told you? In this IGST, 50 percent is retained by 50 percent and 50 percent. 50 percent of IGST. First 50 percent of IGST, who will retain? Retained by CG. Okay. Then, how many CGs we have? One. So, no confusion. Then, 50 percent, remaining 50 percent of IGST will be given to? So, how many SGs we have? Two. To which SG? Tamil Nadu or Karnataka? Huh? Tamil Nadu or Karnataka? Karnataka. Why? You are from Karnataka. Huh? Consuming state. So, GST is a destination based consumption tax. Got it? Remember, GST is what? Destination based consumption tax. So, therefore, it should be given to whom? Consuming state. What is a consuming state? Karnataka. Shared with Karnataka because Karnataka is consuming state. So, this will be shared with consuming state. So, that is the reason why GST is called as destination based consumption tax. Got the clarity? But who is sufferer here? Tamil Nadu. The producing state is having the issue here. Now, this is with effect from which date? This, this situation is with effect from which date? With effect from 1-7-2017. What has happened before 1-7-2017? Before 1-7-2017, the same situation let us apprise what would have happened if it is before 1-7-2017. Where is supplier located? Tamil Nadu. And where is that recipient located? Karnataka. And there is some sale of goods. 
सेल ऑफ गुड्स फॉर विच द रिसिपियंट विल पे कंसिडरेशन एंड दिस दिस वॉज कॉल्ड एस इंटर स्टेट सेल नॉट सप्लाई सप्लाई इज अंडर जीएसटी बट इन द सेल्स टैक्स इट वॉज कॉल्ड एस सेल इंटर स्टेट सेल इंटर स्टेट सेल इन केस ऑफ इंटर स्टेट सेल वट इज दैक्स दट वॉज अप्लीकेबल सी एस टी सेंट्रल सेल्स टैक्स सेंट्रल सेल्स टैक्स सो देर फोर हाउ मच द रिसिपियंट विल पे प्राइस प्लस सी एस टी सेंट्रल सेल्स टैक्स नाउ द सप्लाइर इन तमिलनाडु विल पे दट अमाउंट टू होम सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट और तमिलनाडु गवर्नमेंट तमिलनाडु गवर्नमेंट वाई तमिलनाडु गवर्नमेंट in last class i told you even though cst is levied by central government but it is collected and retained by state government so state government of tamil nadu so therefore the entire cst revenue the entire cst revenue was enjoyed by originating state what was the originating state tamil nadu now what happened with effect from 172 2017 in the place of cst we have igst correct in the place of cst we have igst in that igst 50% was taken by and remaining 50% was taken by karnataka consuming state then tamil nadu is not getting any revenue you got it so all producing states will have this issue so that's why many producing states did not agree for implementation of gst so tamil nadu is a producing state maharashtra is a producing state even gujarat is a producing state you got it sir in india there are you know 28 states what okay. 29 no 29 or 28 28 only why 28 jammu and kashmir is not a state now jammu and kashmir became union territory actually we had 28 states then andhra pradesh got bifurcated into ap and telangana that became 29 then jammu and kashmir abrogation of article 370 to the constitution jammu and kashmir so was no more a state so therefore now at present we have only 28 states in this 28 states whether all 28 states are producing states no no i'll tell you tamil nadu is a producing state andhra pradesh and kerala are consuming states where is there in uh, andhra pradesh production and all nothing you, you have if you have any idea about andhra pradesh you will be able to get the clarity that there is no manufacturing that is happening so but telangana yes telangana is a producing state but here we need to understand something that whatever goods which are produced in tamil nadu is not only consumed in tamil nadu is also consumed in the neighboring states correct or not which means on those goods which are consumed in the neighboring states the gst revenue will not come to tamil nadu but it will go to those neighboring states and in the past the entire revenue was going only into tamil nadu's government so which means the revenue because of implementation of gst will come down or not to producing states yes that's the reason why they did not agree for implementation of gst who did not agree the producing states did not agree and then central government gave one assurance to the state governments actually this issue was highlighted by tamil nadu chief minister at that time so jayalalitha selvi j jayalalitha so she is basically an educated chief minister so sir that does mean uh, other chief ministers are not educated i did not tell that if you are understanding that way it's okay nothing wrong in understanding so but she is really an educated uh, you know female and uh, amazingly she has studied because you know when she was an actress also so whenever the shooting is happening usually in shooting there will be some uh, gaps and all they have to sit idle at that time she will be sitting and reading novels she will not uh, be interested in talking to others also so that much she is educated when long back itself okay and uh, she read the model gst law as soon as it was released and she highlighted this point in a press conference clearly she said definitely tamil nadu will not agree because 
Tamil Nadu government's revenue will come down because GST they have made it as a destination based consumption tax. And following her, many states joined, even though they are not producing states, of all opposition states. Kerala and all is not a producing state, but even they also joined. Why opposition? You understood or not? Then the ruling government do not have any other go, they need to convince. Reason being, GST implementation was a greater milestone for them. For 2019 elections, 2017, if the GST could be implemented in 19 elections, so they can say that we have made revolution in the tax law, that milestone they wanted. So that is why central government was so adamant that they wanted to implement the GST. At that time, the finance minister was Arun Jaitley. So what Arun Jaitley uh, did is that he said to all these states which were opposing. So he said, do not worry, because of GST, if there is any fall of revenue from the base revenue, what it? From the base revenue, that is you are getting some indirect tax revenue. So for your state spa, okay, your state government, you are getting some revenue from indirect taxes in the past. Now, if GST is implemented, what is your problem? The revenue may go down, correct? I will give you that revenue, shortfall. Whatever is the shortfall, central government will give you. So then what is your problem in accepting for GST? Are you understanding? Why are you opposing now for GST? One reason, sir, if GST is implemented, our revenues will come down. Do not worry, central government gave assurance to all the state government to compensate the loss of revenue on account of implementation of GST. On account of implementation of GST, if there is any loss of revenue, who will compensate to whom? Central government will compensate to state governments. Now, state governments agreed for implementation of GST. So, successfully GST got implemented. Now, state governments are asking what you will take as the base year revenue 2015-16. When GST was implemented, 17. So, 2015-16, you earned some money. That we will take as base revenue. But 2015-16, what we earn, and today it will not be the same situation because our tax revenue earnings will increase. Okay, so you put a growth rate, fine. 2015-16 base year revenue plus growth rate 14%. So, therefore, you will be getting it as expected revenue. You got it. How the expected revenue is calculated? Expected revenue or estimated revenue, base year revenue plus 14 percent growth rate, compounding. Okay, 14 percent, 14 percent, 14 percent will be added. So, this is your estimated revenue minus actual revenue from GST. You got it. Clear here? How estimated revenue is computed? Base year revenue plus 14 percent estimated revenue minus actual revenue this difference is there na this difference will be given by central government to state government as a compensation now states are very very happy super sir so now we will accept for implementation of gst because you gave the assurance to us now what central government did is you know, superb, you turn, twist. That is, they created a new law called as GST Compensation to States Act. Under the GST Compensation to States Act, they created a new tax called as GST Compensation Cess. And that GST Compensation Cess they are collecting from the people of India and they are giving it to the states. Now, I am central government. I gave you promise. What does it mean? I should pay out of my pocket, correct? But what I am doing? I am collecting it from the people and I am giving it to you, okay? Generally, people who do this charities and all, what they do is that they go for donations with many people. See, you know what charity is? You earn some money. That money you spend, that is only called as charity. But what I will do? I will ask all of you. I want to do that work. So, can you give me money? You will give some money. Using this money, I will do the charity. But in the charity, my photo will be printed. 
hope you understood what i am talking about okay so state government when they give one bag what is that bag so for some festival pongal or diwali some bag they will give which contains provisions and all in that provisions bag why chief minister's photo is required correct am i right okay chief minister photo is also okay pa chief minister's wife photo why is it required you got it fine that is also okay why chief minister's son's photo is required are you understanding what i am talking about whose money ya yeah? whose money whether his father's money his grandparents money whose money it is it is a people money people money when we are spending for people why you need to put your photograph on that you got it that is only happening here sir you are collecting money from the people why you gave the promise before you gave the promise did you ask the people opinion did you conduct any voting that we wanted to give compensation to the states for that we are recovering it from the people of this country did you ask the people no you have to ask na it is whose money our hard earned money you are taking it you give here you give already we are giving you some 50% na from that you give no you are not giving from that but you are taking it from the people and the ill effect of this composition like this compensation cess is what you know they levied a compensation cess of you know 16% see this gst is 28% on motor vehicles on motor vehicles gst rate is 28 year compensation cess is 16% 16% compensation cess now what could be the price of a motor vehicle ex showroom price that is uh, excluding gst an suv you take 8 lakhs 8 lakhs 10 lakhs ha huh, 10 lakhs okay now on this 10 lakhs gst 2 lakh 80000 compensation says 1 lakh 60000 so what is the total price of this before registration ha huh? before registration how much 14 lakh 40000 so when you buy a suv you have suv plus one budget car how 4 lakh 40000 rupees 4 lakh 40000 rupees you will get one budget car alto quid etc and all so where is it inside the suv you have to open and see inside the suv it is there you understood and so 4 lakh 40000 rupees we are paying as taxes okay are yaar manufacturer is also not getting that much money pa one manufacturer who make that car also will not get that much margin hardly he will be getting some 1 lakh or 1 and 1/2 lakh okay but because he need to pay to the dealer na dealer showroom he need to pay for them he need to incur on the marketing every hard work he will put but who is taking away the benefit one company left the country ford ha tata bye bye we don't need how we can survive we know are taking this much amount then how people will be buying and automobile consumption that is the two like four wheelers so the production has dropped because the consumption has dropped now if you see no you go and ask any showroom car ready not available they will take a order from you and they will be making it and they'll give so 3 months 6 months 1 year 1 year pa 1 year so recently i inquired uh, this nexan car tata nexan like that nice car it is so i inquired for that they said uh, yes sir 12 months waiting period ha huh? 12 months waiting period sir by next year some other new model will come sir so when the new model and all is coming i will be buying the old model 12 months waiting period is what here crazy it is so therefore that much production they have stopped reason being consumption has dropped to a greater extent and many people asked the finance minister media and all asked madam uh, automobile sector is going down day by day and they are not able to get more revenues etc and all they are shutting down the plants 
employment is losing. So what is your opinion on that? Because you have added this GST compensation says only this has happened. No, not because of GST compensation says Ola and Uber. People started traveling in Ola and Uber. That is the reason why they stopped buying the cars. That is the reason why production has come down. This is what she said. Pa. Fact. I am not adding anything in this. She said this only, exactly this only. And people did not understand here that this compensation says 16% which was a old story I am talking about. Today's story is 22%. Sir, this 16 percent compensation says today it went to 22 percent if you are buying any motor vehicle with greater than 1500 cc, 1500 cc and uh, that uh, 4 beyond 4 sub meter, that 4000 mm na, that uh, length, length of the car, example Seltos okay, and uh, this uh, Creta these cars and all, even uh, Scorpio, Mahindra, uh, that what is that, uh, XUV 700, then uh, Innova, all these cars will be having how much as the compensation is there? 22 percent, 28 percent GST plus compensation into literally 50 percent. You understood or not? Clear? So, when you buy a car, 50 percent you are paying to whom? Garment. As what? GST. Okay. And this money is used for what purpose? This 22 percent is used for what purpose? To give the compensation. To give the compensation to those states from where we are collecting or we will collect from across the country and give it to those states where there is loss of revenue. Across the country GST compensation says is levied on the notified goods. On the notified goods, not on all goods, on notified goods. And this money which is collected will be given to those states which are having shortfall on account of implementation of GST. Okay, sir. Fine. How many years? This is okay. Fine. They are giving compensation. So, they are doing it. And for how many years? Five years from the date of implementation of GST. What is the date of implementation of GST? 1-7-2017. Five years. Five years is what? 1-7-2022, expired na, overwrite as on today, but they extended it further year, till 31st March 2026 they extended. So therefore GST compensation says will be levied on notified goods up to when? 31st March 2026. So, actually initially it was 5 years from the date of implementation of GST and GST council can decide to extend it for a further period. So, they extend it till 31st March 2026. So, will it stop there? I do not know. It can be extended for a further period as and when the GST council decides. Okay. Sir, who is there in GST council? Who is there in GST council? Central government or state government? Both both central government representation union finance minister state government representation state finance minister now you go and ask a state finance minister about this what they will say we don't know all those things center has taken the decision don't believe in these words because in gst council the major representation is state only states only is having the major representation it is not the central government states. So, literally all the state finance ministers and union finance ministers are looting us. You got it. In what way? In this way. Here, why you need to extend it till 31st March 2026? So, GST revenue for few states did not happen. So, why it did not happen? You implement the GST law properly in those states. For example, Bihar. I told you, na, Bihar and all. You properly go and implement there. If you implement there, whatever money that is earned from Tamil Nadu, whatever money that is earned from Karnataka, this need not be paid to those states. You understood? You properly implement GST in every state. Automatically, that state's revenue will increase. 
So here what will happen? So some states because they are not properly implementing the GST. So now who are all the sufferers? We, the general people, the general public are the sufferers. Sir, is the compensation is applicable on all goods or only on notified goods? Only on notified goods. But this notified goods is not one or two. We have a big list of notified goods. I gave you an example of motor vehicle. Sir, on this beverages also there is compensation, sir. sir. On beverages, this mineral water bottles is there, na? On that, on, on this uh, aerated waters. Where and all aerated water, all uh, colas, okay, sodas, etc. And all Pepsi, 7-Up, etc. On that, there is compensation, sir. Like that, there are many goods. Even on tobacco and tobacco products, there is compensation, sir. So, there are many goods on which they are levying compensation, sir. But these goods are notified from time to time. Sir, so can government bring in some more goods also into this list? Yes. They can remove the existing goods in the list? That is also yes, but I don't know whether it will happen or not. Okay. But addition is definitely possible. They are already increasing the rates also. So, now tell me what are the various indirect taxes, GSTs that we have. GST is not one actually. How many types of GSTs we have? So, tell me what are the five GSTs that we have? CGST. SGST, UTGST, IGST, compensation says. Okay. So, that is about the types of GSTs. CGST levied by central government on intrastate supply. SGST levied by state government on intrastate supply. UTGST levied by central government again on intrastate supply. IGST is levied by central government on interstate supply and 50% shared with consuming state based on place of supply. And we have even GST compensations as, as well. Now, see this. Whenever there is some import from foreign territory to a state, there is some import of goods. On import of goods, whether GST is applicable or not applicable, already we discussed this in the last class, whether GST is applicable or not applicable on import applicable. Why GST is applicable on import? Because in the past we had CVD and SAD to counterbalance that CVD and SAD. So, they have levied IGST in the place of CVD, SAD. What is the taxes that will be applicable now? IGST. Okay. Then within the state when the transaction happens, it is intrastate CGST, SGST. From one state to another state, it is interstate IGST. And again in the another state, intrastate, CGST, SGST. From state to a union territory, it is what? Interstate, correct? From one state to one union territory, interstate, IGST. Within union territory, it is not CGST, SGST, it is CGST, UTGST. Again from the union territory to foreign territory. On export also, what is the type of GST that is applicable? IGST. So, remember on import and export, which GST will be applicable? IGST. On import export and interstate. What is the type of GST? IGST. Once again, on import, export and interstate, the GST will be IGST. And what are the union territories that we have for the purpose of applicability of UTGST Act? Total how many union territories we have for which UTGST Act will be applicable? Five union territories. What are those five union territories? Already you said one. Daman, DU, Dadra, Nagar, Haveli. Then Pondicherry is not a union territory for UTGST Act. Andaman and Nicobar, then Lakshadweep, then Sandigar. No, again Delhi is not a union territory without state legislature. It's a union territory with state legislature. Uh, Goa, you tell. Tell. Goa, why Mumbai? Ladakh, not Jammu and Kashmir, it is Ladakh. So, again Ladakh is also union territory without state legislature. So, these are the five union territories where UTGST Act will be applicable. What are they? Daman DU, Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, then Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep, Chandigarh, Ladakh. For these five union territories, what is the type of GST that is applicable? UTGST. Okay. And these five union territories are called as union territories without state legislature. So, these are under whose control? Central government. Now, what are the two union territories with state legislature? 
Pondicherry and Delhi. Now one more three you add that is Jammu and Kashmir. Jammu and Kashmir state is bifurcated into two union territories. Union territory of Ladakh which is union territory without state legislature. Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, union territory with state legislature. So now three union territories are there with state legislature which will be treated like states only. So which act will be applicable there? SGST Act or UTGST Act? SGST Act. What are those three? Delhi, Delhi Pondicherry, Jammu and Kashmir. And how many states we have? 28 states. So 28 plus these three union territories with state legislature. So how many SGST Acts we have in India? 31 SGST Acts. You understood how 31 SGST Acts? 28 states plus three union territories with state legislature. So that's what I have given above in page number four. In page number four, I have given. We have one IGST Act. Why one IGST Act only? IGST is levied by? And we have only one central government, so one IGST Act, one CGST Act, and one UTGST Act for five union territories. Got it? For all five union territories put together, it is only one UTGST Act. Why? Again, who will levy? Central government. A central government is only one. That's why we have one UTGST Act. Is it clear? But for remaining states and union territories with state legislature, we have 31 SGST Acts. So that's what I have given, even though Delhi and Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir are union territories, constitutionally they were given partial statehood, therefore CGST, SGST is applicable there. But for the other union territories, so it will be UTGST. And what are the other union territories? Andaman and Nicobar, Chandigarh, Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, Daman, Diyu, Lakshadweep and Ladakh. Now, have a look into this illustration in page number 8. So, I am making you run between the pages. Huh? You do not have to read it that way. You read it from 1, 2, 3, 4 like that. I will make you to turn the pages because, you know, brick by brick I can construct. Concept by concept properly. Okay. And uh, what other work you have? At least turn the pages so that you will be active. I am not making you write anything. So, little bit, some physical effort should be there. No? Okay. Then say this, location of supplier union territory of Jammu and Kashmir, place of supply also union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. What is the nature of supply? Inter or intra? Intra. What is the type of GST? CGST and SGST or UTGST? SGST because Jammu and Kashmir is not Union territory without state legislature. It is union territory with state legislature. So, SGST. Then next. Second one. Union territory of Ladakh and place of supply also union territory of Ladakh. Now, intra GST will be CGST plus SGST or UTGST? UTGST. Because Ladakh is union territory without state legislature. Then next. Union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Union territory of Ladakh. Interstate. And what is the type of GST? IGST. Will 50% be shared with? No. 100% to CG. Why? Because Ladakh is what? Union territory without state legislature which means that is under whose control? Central government. So, 50% sharing is not applicable. So, full 100% is retained by central government. Then, next number 4. Arunachal Pradesh location of supplier. Place of supply union territory of Jammu and Kashmir. What is the nature of supply? Inter. And what is the type of GST? IGST. Whether 50% is shared? Yes, because union territory of Jammu and Kashmir is not under central government. 50% shared with Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Then, next below, 
supplier location is chennai place of supply coimbatore tamil nadu nature of supply intra state supply what is the type of gst cgst sgst cgst levied and collected by central government and sgst levied and collected by which government state government of tamil nadu then next Location of supplier Chennai, Tamil Nadu, place of supply Bengaluru, Karnataka, nature of supply is interstate. What is a GST? IGST, levied and collected by central government and 50% shared with, 50% shared with state government of Karnataka. The next number 3, location of supplier Chennai, Tamil Nadu, place of supply Pondicherry, Union territory having partial statehood. Nature of supply interstate. Type of GST? IGST. IGST. Interstate. Interstate. IGST. So, who will collect? Central government. Will the 50 percent be shared? Yes. And 50 percent shared with Union territory of Pondicherry. Then, number 4, location of supplier Delhi, Union Territory having partial statehood. Place of supply Delhi, Union Territory having partial statehood. So, what is the nature of supply? Intra-state supply and type of GST? CGST and SGST. CGST, levied and collected by central government. SGST, state government of Delhi. So, that we will write it as Union Territory of Delhi, Union Territory of Delhi. But for Union Territory, it should be UTGST na? No, for three Union Territories, you CGST, SGST only will be applicable, UTGST will not come. Chennai, Tamil Nadu, location of supplier, place of supply, Chandigarh, Union Territory, interstate supply. So, type of GST will be IGST, levied and collected by Central Government and 50% shared? No share. Why? Union territory of Chandigarh is completely with central government. So, 100% retained. Then, 6. Location of supplier Chandigarh, place of supply Chandigarh, intrastate supply. So, type of GST? CGST, UTGST. CGST levied and collected by central government. UTGST also levied and collected by central government. Okay. Then, on import and exports, whether GST will be applicable or not applicable? Yes, applicable. On import of goods, IGST applicable. On export of goods also, IGST is applicable. However, export will be treated as zero rated supplies. Zero rated supply means what? So, not that the rate is zero. The rate is not zero, but the burden will become zero. How the burden will become zero? First, I will be paying tax. Whatever tax I paid, I will get it as a refund. So, therefore, the burden will become zero. That is why it is called as zero rated supplies. Okay. Even though we pay tax, but we get the refund of that. So, that is why the burden will become zero. For the purpose of GST, export of goods and services are treated as zero rated supplies but not treated as exempted supplies. So, therefore, on import and exports, whether there will be IGST? Yes. But why, sir, you have given here cross? Because even though we pay the GST, but we get it as a refund. So, just write down there, pay GST, pay GST and get refund. Okay. So, the burden will become 0. So, that is why I have not given here. And in detail about the zero rated supply, we will be learning in charge under IGST Act. We have a separate chapter, charge under IGST Act, there we will be learning. So, right now you need to remember what, what is the meaning of zero rated supplies. So, in zero rated supplies, what will happen? Rate is not zero. We will pay tax and we get it as a refund. So, the burden will become 0. If the rate itself is 0, it is not 0 rated, 
it is actually nil rated and it will come under exempted what it rate zero means it is called as what nil rated nil rated and nil rated are treated as what exempted okay but zero rated means the rate is nil there can be any rate but when you export it or supply it to scz it will be called as zero rated so you just write down somewhere over there so what are zero rated export of goods or services export of goods or services and supply of goods or services are treated as zero rated export of goods or services and supply of goods or services to scz actually supply of goods or services to scz special economic zone are treated as zero rated okay and what is the difference between nil rated and zero rated nil rated versus zero rated in case of nil rated in case of nil rated rate of gst is zero nil okay but in case of zero rated burden of gst becomes zero okay so means what there will be some rate we pay that rate and we get it as a refund that's the reason why the burden of gst becomes zero then what is the purpose of igst act mainly we have cgst act SGST Act, IGST Act, UTGST Act, all the different acts we have. But for our exam, we do not have UTGST Act and SGST Act. Why, sir? Because SGST Act is not something different. CGST Act you take, copy paste, and you replace central government with state government, that is SGST Act. Means whatever section that we have in CGST Act, the same section we have in SGST Act also. You do not have to learn SGST Act. UTGST Act also the same, same as CGST Act. But in IGST Act, we have the separate provisions for the purpose of place of supply, interstate supply, intrastate supply, etc., and all is given in IGST Act. Generally, when I am referring to any section that will be of CGST Act, if it is IGST Act, I will stress this is so and so section of IGST Act. Okay. Otherwise, it will be all the sections will be of CGST Act. And this already we discussed that is position of goods under GST in comparison to earlier system and look into GST compensation also we completed now, but that discussion we will complete now first and then come back to other points. Look into page number 15. GST Compensation to States Act 2017. What is the objective of this? To compensate states on account of what? Implementation of GST. Due to implementation of GST, there will be some loss of revenue to them. 
So, compensation says is leviable on intrastate supply or interstate supply or both, both. With a view to provide compensation to states, underline that, with a view to provide compensation to states for loss of revenue arising on account of implementation of GST. Why will there be loss of revenue on account of implementation of GST? Because producing states will not get any GST revenue and the revenue will be going to the consuming states and the central government. That is why there will be loss of revenue on account of implementation of GST. Then what is the geography that is levy across the country or only in those states where there is loss of revenue? All states across the country. What is the period for which it will be levied? Five years from the date of implementation of GST and it can be extended for a further period as decided by GST council. Accordingly, it was extended or not? Yes. Accordingly, it is extended now. You look into the next page, you can see at the end. With effect from 1-7-2022, the period for levy and collection of compensation has been extended up to 31st March 2026. Okay. That is the extended time. But is it final? No. Can it be extended for a further period? Yes. Then come back. What are the goods which are covered under compensation says? All goods are notified goods. Notified goods. This is the example of some notified goods. Not that only these goods are covered. This is just an example. Pan masala, tobacco on tobacco products. Then coal, aerated waters, motor vehicles, motor cars. These are some examples of goods on which compensation says is applicable. Should we remember the notified goods? No, not necessary. In exam, in exam, they will be giving the compensation says so and so percentage. Then on that product, there is compensation says. You do not have to remember the list of goods on which compensation says is applicable. And computation. Now concentrate. While discussing one example related to that motor vehicles, here compensation says I computed on what? Value. So whether I added GST and then computed compensation says or compensation says computed on the value itself value itself. So, therefore, while computing the compensation says whether we need to add GST or we do not have to add GST, we do not have to add GST. So, this says is in addition to GST payable and is computed on the transaction value excluding GST. Input tax credit. So, when we are discussing about this input tax credit, there we will come across this point and applicability to whom it is applicable? All persons who are making all registered persons who are making intrastate or interstate supply of notified goods other than those opting for composition scheme. There is something called as composition scheme. Rather than paying tax at the normal rates, people who are opting for composition scheme will pay tax at the reduced rates. For them, this compensation is not applicable. Got it? To composition scheme taxpayer, compensation says is not applicable. Clear? Can you remember this? To whom? Composition scheme taxpayer, compensation says is not applicable. This for MCQs it will be useful. Be careful in that. How it works? So, we will see with the help of an illustration. See the next page. Which year is taken as base year? 1516 is taken as the base year. In 1516, the actual revenue 800 crores. Okay. This is 800 crores. Actual tax revenue means at that time indirect tax revenue to the state was 800 crores. Now, how we need to get the projected tax revenue? Plus 14 percent. So, 800 plus 14 percent, 912 plus 14 percent, 1040 plus 14 percent 1185 plus 14 percent 1351 that is how we got the projected tax revenue. Now, from which year onwards compensation is payable? 1718 full year or in 1718 from one date? 1st July when GST is implemented from that date 1st July which means in 1718 how many months GST is applicable? 9 months. So, whatever you have computed you convert for 9 months. 
So, 1718 projected is 1040. Now, you convert for 9 months. So, 1040 into 9 by 12, 780 crores. You understood how we got 780 crores. But 1819, you do not have to do that because for fully 1819, GST is applicable. And 1920 also, full year, you do not have to do anything. So, this is how you got the projected. What is the actual? For 1718, actual is 1000. So, that 1000 also you need to convert into so 9 by 12. So, 750 crores. Then 1819,240, 1920,314. This is what? Actual. Now, you take 1718. For 1718, what is the projected? 1718, what is the projected? 780. 780 minus actual. 750. 780 minus 750 is what? So, the 30 crores will be given as compensation to that state. You understood? To whichever state this particular computation belongs to, to that state 30 crores will be given as compensation. Then, next 1819, how much is the projected? 1185. What is the actual? More or less? More. So, will they get any compensation? No. So, when the compensation will be given? If the actual tax revenue is less than the projected tax revenue, they will get compensation. Now, sir, will they return anything? No, no. There is no returning and all. If there is shortfall, that will be paid. But excess and all, they do not have to return that. Then, 1920, what is the projected? 1351. What is actual? 1314. What is the difference? So, is the actual less than projected? Yes. So, that 37 crores will be given as compensation. You understood? So, this is about the points, how it works, I have given. What are the key points that you need to remember is first base year. What is considered as base year? 15, 16. What is the growth rate? 14 percent. And how the compensation will be computed? Projected. Ah. Projected tax revenue minus actual tax revenue. Okay. And for how many years this will be payable? Till 31st March 2026. Okay. So we completed this compensation says also. Now come back to GST Council, page number 12. Tell me whether we have single GST model or dual GST model, dual GST model. In dual GST model, what will happen? Both central government and state government shall levy, correct or not? Which means, can only central government decide everything? No. Can state government alone can decide everything? No. That is the reason why a common decision making body was required. That common decision making body is known as GST council. But who will be the members of this GST council? It is not Prime Minister or Chief Minister, but the Finance Ministers will be the members of this council. So, for central government, we have one Union Finance Minister, correct? Then how many states? 28 plus 3, 31. For 31 states, there will be 31 state Finance Ministers, okay? And uh, this is uh, Union Territories. For Union Territories, one MP is appointed. So, for the purpose of looking after the finance related to that, so Union MP of State Affairs, okay, they are called as Union MP of State Affairs to look after that Union territory, okay. So, therefore, total how many members will be there in GST Council? 33. How 33? 31 states plus one Union Finance Minister plus one union MP for the five union territories. So, therefore, 31 members will be there. Now, sir, state, should they be finance ministers? State representative is state minister. Should that person be finance minister? Usually finance minister, but if the finance minister do not know English and Hindi, so then they can send any other minister also. You understood what I am talking about? Huh? Ah, it is like uh, they can go, but not every finance minister in a state will be that much educated. Nah, you understood. They may not know anything just because they have got uh, power, so they will become the minister. 
is there any criteria to become a minister no criteria if you are chief minister son also you can become minister just a mla you have to win one time okay that much only you don't have to do anything at all so you can win as mla in one year second year you can become minister no problem and all so it's only about the family blood money there are many factors like that so but education factors and all is not at all a criteria nowadays you understood any tom dick and harry can become a minister and therefore what usually it will be finance ministers only but a state minister can also go even though they are not finance minister okay so therefore what is the number of members in the gst council 33 that's what i have given in total there are 33 members in gst council one union finance minister one union minister of state revenue and 31 states finance ministers and to call it as a valid meeting because in gst council lot of times last it was 51st gst council meeting okay so therefore many gst not that in a year they should be conducting only one gst council meeting and all in a year itself three times four times also they will be sitting for discussion okay so now this gst council meeting to be called as a valid meeting every meeting requires a quorum correct what is the minimum number that should be present in the meeting is called as quorum and that quorum is 50% means half half means 17 members correct 33 yeah 33 half is what 16.5 so so where they will go for that so the therefore 17 members 17 members will be taken as the quorum okay then what about the votes weight sir state government vote is also having the same weight as central government no central government vote weight is only 1/3 but state government vote weight is 2/3 see there the weighted votes are 1/3 for central government and 2/3 for state government decision is considered to be passed if 3/4 weighted majority is obtained what does it mean let's see an example to understand this see below there is a proposal to increase the rate of gst on smartphones from 18% to 28% because lot of people are using smartphones without smartphones you know we cannot think of the life and all now it is better to levy gst there so people will pay you understood actually this is how government will be levying the taxes lot of people were uh, not getting proper food at home why because people at home are very busy so mom will be busy with cereals and uh, after marriage so wife will be busy with uh, you know this ott platforms and all so then who will cook food we only should go and cook food and uh, experience only so therefore <laughs> you know if you don't know cooking food then swiggy and zomato if this is not there we would have died out of hunger itself you understood or not so this swiggy and zomato people started depending on that to a greater extent now finance minister identified oh lot of people are dependent on swiggy and zomato let's levy gst on that the restaurant is unregistered restaurant why they have not crossed the threshold limit for registration the restaurant is unregistered ha huh? concentrate the restaurant is unregistered but from that restaurant you are ordering food from swiggy or zomato there is gst on that there is gst on the food who will pay that swiggy zomato will pay which means the price of the food will increase yes like that only smartly no we need revenue so now smartphones is but every person will be using smartphone let's levy gst 28% 10% extra only they will pay they will think that they are paying price for the smartphone they will pay so now this is the proposal who voted in favor madam will definitely vote in favor one union finance minister when madam votes in favor sir also has to vote in favor reason union mp should listen <laughs> okay and then four state finance ministers have agreed why maybe central government ruling states okay they have to agree no other go if they are not agreeing na then they will not get the budget allocation and all properly 
so therefore these people voted in favor and 13 state finance ministers voted against so what is the total number present in the meeting 19 quorum achieved yes quorum achieved because total 19 people are present in the meeting and uh, what is the total weighted votes total weighted votes central government vote will be one third so one third state government and union mp also one third and remaining will be two thirds so 1 into 1 by 3 plus 1 into 1 by 3 plus 17, correct? 17 only, na? 17 here. How 17? 4 plus 13. I am talking about total, total, total weighted votes, total weighted votes. So total weighted votes, this uh, 1 plus 1, 2 votes will be having one third weight. So 2 into 1 by 3 plus 13 and 4, 17, 17 into 2 by 3. So, what is the total weighted votes? 12. And what is the weighted votes in favor? We weighted votes in favor. 1 plus 1, 2 into 1 by 3 plus 4 into 2 by 3, that is 3.3. 3.3 divided by 12 into 100. See how much? 3.3 divided by 12 into 100. How much? 27%. Is it more than 3 fourth? No, so proposal will be accepted or proposal will be dropped? Proposal will be dropped. Understood how the voting will happen? Suppose instead of these four state finance ministers, if 10 state finance ministers agreed, then what would have happened? 2 into 1 by 3 plus 10 into 2 by 3. 2 into 1 by 3, 2 into 1 by 3, so 0.67. And uh, 10 into 2 by 3, 20 divided by 3 plus 0.67. So, that will be 7.33. 7.33 divided by 12 into 100. Even then, it will be 61. 61 percent. So, actually, how much majority we need? 3 fourth majority. 3 fourth majority means number of votes in favor should be 3 fourth greater than 3 fourth of the number of votes against, correct or not. So, how much should be the majority that we need to get? 75 percent. So, it is not simple majority of 50 percent. It is 3 fourth majority that is required. Only then the decision is to be taken. Otherwise, the proposal will be dropped. Understood? So, therefore, this is what I pass down one comment. So, states are having the power. If states decide, they can really bring a big change with respect to GST. So, what we are thinking actually, it is the central government's decision and all, not necessary. So, the states is also involved. So, therefore, we need to question the state governments because the state government MPs, are you understanding? The state government MPs are not there in the GST council, the state government MLAs are only there, clear? You understood what I am talking about? Sir, in the GST council, MPs are not there. MPs are there in Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, got it? But who are there in GST council? MLAs whom we are electing. So, they are going into the council as state finance ministers. So, they are only there in the GST council. So, therefore, the state governments is having a key role to play in GST. So, that two weighted votes are given more for state government for that reason only. What it? Fine, yeah. Then, what are the areas of recommendations by GST council? Up to this, I understood. What are the points we discussed about GST council? It is a decision making body. Who are the members of that GST council? and how many members will be there and what is the quorum and then to take any decision how much of the weighted votes are required and how much majority is required etc. Now, what are the areas which they will be deciding? Generally you think and let me know. What are the areas? Rates to increase, decrease the rates, then exemptions to bring some goods into exemption or service into exemptions or remove the exemptions related to exemptions and then 
Hmm. Notified about what? Huh, that's what for what? Ah, okay. So they will be having power to notify the goods which are applicable for compensation says and revision in rates, compensation says rates also. Then procedures. What procedures? So return filing. So when the returns are required to be filed, what are the types of returns that are required? So these are the key areas where they take the decision. Taxes that are to be subsumed under GST. What are the exemptions that they wanted to give? And for which state, how much is the threshold limit for registration? And then apportionment of IGST and uh, determination of GST rates, including the special rates. Then special provision for Jammu and Kashmir, Northeastern states, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, any other issues related to GST. These are some areas of recommendations by GST Council. Then, sir, is GST Council a government body or a constitutional body? Constitutional body. It is not a government body. If it is a government body, it should listen to central government. But it is not a government body. It is a constitutional body. Means it derives the powers from where? Constitution. In constitution, what is the relevant article? Article 279A of the constitution. Highlight that. Article 279A of the constitution empowers the president to constitute this council. Then we have this concept of input tax credit system of credit in taxes. Tell me what you know about input tax credit. You have any idea about input tax credit? What is input tax credit? At the time of purchase. Okay. So, you get some benefit on purchase to adjust against your output liability. Okay. Say this. There is a trader. There is a trader. And this trader is making some purchases. On purchases, he will pay some price plus tax, correct? To whom? To his supplier. To his supplier. Again, trader is engaged in some sales. On his sales, from his customer, he will be collecting some price plus tax. Okay. And say the price paid on purchase is 10,000 plus tax is 1,200 rupees. Whereas on sale, the price is somewhere 15,000 and the tax is 1,800. So, now this 1200 is called as input tax, got it, this 1200 is called as input tax, tax paid on purchase or tax paid on invert supply. So, this purchases we call as invert supply pa because purchase is a word usually used in the context of goods, correct? But services we will not call as purchases. That's why we give a common name for it called as inverse supplies. And for the sales, we give one name called as outward supplies. Outward supplies. Now, this 1200 is known as what? Input tax. Input tax. And this is tax on invert supplies input tax. Then this 1800 is known as what? Output tax. Output tax. Tax on outward supplies. Is it clear? Tax on inward supply is known as input tax. Tax on outward supply is known as output tax. This output tax has got another name that is gross liability. The output tax is known as what? gross liability. Now, what we can do is that while making payment of this, 
we can set off the input tax with the output tax. We can set off the input tax with the output tax so that the remaining amount that we pay. So, therefore, what is the net liability? Net liability is 600. How we got 600? 1800 minus 1200 that is 600. 600 is the net liability that is payable to government. You understood? This is known as input tax adjusted against the output tax liability. So, this 1200 is input tax and it will be like a credit. It will be like a benefit. So, it will be called as input tax credit. Sir, but why it is like this? Simple logic here. I am collecting from you 1800. You are my customer. I am collecting from you 1800. This is 1800. Okay, I collected from you. In this 1800 rupees, already I paid 1200 at the time of purchase. Correct? Yes or no? Sir, I am collecting 1800 from you. But in this 1800, already I paid at the time of purchase 1200 to my supplier. So, which I am recovering. So, this is 1200 I recovered. Now, what is left? This 600 belongs to that I am giving to government. You understood or not? So, which means that is a net liability. Got it? Nothing but recovery of my expenditure. 1800 I will collect from the customer, 1200 I will recover, that is my money, already I paid at the time of purchase, now recovered, so balance 600 I pay to government, you got it? So now, this 1200, what I paid to my supplier, he will be paying it to government, so which means government got the revenue of 1800, how they got the revenue of 1800? So, my supplier paid 1200, I paid 600, so therefore 1800 government is getting. So, this is how this input tax credit system will work out, okay. So, now tell me what is input tax credit? Tax paid on invert supply can be availed as credit and set off with tax payable on Outward supplies. This taking credit, set off of credit will be called as availed as ITZ, utilization as ITZ. You understood? So, this taking credit, taking credit is normal general language. Convert it into a legal language. Availment of credit. And set off we will be calling it as utilization of credit. Come on, reframe the sentence. Tax paid on inward supplies availed as credit and utilized for payment of GST or tax on outward supplies. Got it? This is known as input tax credit. So, what will be the net liability? Gross liability minus input tax credit is the net liability and gross liability is nothing but output tax. Input tax credit is Input tax. So, output tax minus input tax is the net GST payable. Is it clear, Pa? Now, even through journal entries, we can understand this. What is the entry for purchase? This trader you take. What is the entry for purchase here? Purchases account debit. How much is the purchase price? 10,000 or 11,200? 10,000. Purchase account debit, 10,000. Then input tax credit account debit, how much? 1200 to supplier account. To supplier account or to bank account, 11,200. So, this 1200 we recognized as a asset, current asset. You understood? This 1200, is it really that we are getting this money? No, we are not getting this money. But whenever we pay at the time of purchase, rather than adding it to our cost, so this we will add to cost. Whereas this is recoverable, correct or not? This 1200 is like recoverable. We get this as input tax credit 
and adjusted against our future liability. That's why we create a asset that is current asset. Okay. And that's why we created a separate account for this. Now, what is the entry for sales? Sales entry. Debtor or bank account debit. How much is the sale value? So, 15,000 plus 1,800. 16,800. But to sales, how much we will credit? 15,000 and two GST payable. Two GST payable. How much? 1,800. So, GST payable is what? Asset or liability? Liability. Usually, liability shows what balance? Credit balance. So, liability is showing a credit balance here. It is a current liability. It's a current liability and this 15,000 we will recognize as revenue. Okay. Understood? Now, what is the entry for set off? Liability we need to cancel. Liability shows a credit balance. So, to cancel what we will do? Debit. So, GST payable account debit. How much? 1,800. Two. ITC account. So, ITC input tax credit is a current asset which shows a debit balance. Now, we are using it. So, to ITC account, how much? 1,200. So, remaining amount we have to pay. So, to bank account that is 600. Okay. So, this 600 is our net liability. This 600 is our net liability. Okay. And this 1,800 is our gross liability and this 1200 is input tax credit. Understood here everyone? So, that is about input tax credit and we will take a break. Thereafter, we will continue with the remaining aspects and post break, we will also start with the next segment that is segment 2, supply under GST. Okay.